Hello friends, let's start the program that is FCFS first come first serve which is a CPU scheduling algorithm and let me tell you how this algorithm works if we give the process names, arrival times and service times it should calculate the completion time, turnaround time, waiting time, net turnaround time we have particular formulas for turnaround time, waiting time, net turnaround, net turnaround time average turnaround time, average waiting time but what we have to calculate is the completion time of each and every process and this completion time differs from one algorithm to one other algorithm so let's see how this FCFS which is a non preemptive CPU scheduling algorithm works firstly what happens is if the time assume if the time is zero arrival time of process A is zero so the process A is selected and executed once the process A starts to execute it cannot be preempted, that is, it cannot be interrupted. So, as the service time of A is ST, that is, here is the service time, is 3, A will be executed till 3, when that 3 seconds, yeah, assume that it's 3 seconds, or 3 nanoseconds, or 3 milliseconds. So, the completion time of A is 3. Next, at the time 3, the computer will see how many processes have arrived. So arrival time of B is 2 and arrival time of C is 4. So only B has arrived. So B is selected and executed. So B is executed for 6 seconds. So 6 plus 3 it becomes 9. So till 9 seconds, so the present time is 9. At 9 seconds, the CPU will again check how many processes have arrived. So again it will check. C has arrived at 4th second, D at 6, E at 8. So three processes have arrived. So now the CPU has to select the process which have arrived first. That is C. Since it has arrived first or before than any other process, C has selected. So C is executed. The completion time is 13. Then comes again CPU has to select a process which is it has two options D and D. The arrival time is checked. B has arrived first, so D is executed, then at last E is executed. This is how the program works. This is how the algorithm works. So let's see how the program implements this algorithm. So what I've done is the program is basically divided into three parts. First is the main, which takes the inputs and sorts it according to their arrival times, which is very essential. Enter the number of processes we have to give the number of process in our example we have given 5 then it stores in the variable n next what we are doing is we are defining a structure a structure with data type a structure is a collection of heterogeneous or different data types what we are do doing over here is for every process we have a separate structure variable we can also do it without using structures but the number of variables really increases so for our ease of for our ease we have used only structures we can also do it with individual arrays now coming to this part we are using a for loop to take the inputs of all the n number of processes we are taking the program name arrival time and service times next we are sorting the next we are sorting these processes according to their arrival times you can use any type of sorting here you see I am using this temporary variable for sorting the uh, for swapping these processes I have declared this temporary variable over here okay, next. this is the first part now we have to calculate the completion time and for that I am using another separate function called CA you can name it as you wish ok let's see here what we are initially doing is we are trying to find out the total completion time or total service time that means the time taken to complete the entire process no, no sorry that was my mistake it comes in other algorithms so let's see what happens in FCFS initially we are assigning STT which is service time the present service time we are assigning it to the initial process arrival time because 
Okay, let's see what happened. Let's see in this example. We have at arrival time is 0 and service time is 3. What we are actually doing in this program is that we are adding up these two things. See, we are adding up these two things, 0 and 3. And we are storing and it is the completion time. And next what we are doing is we are comparing with the completion time and the next process arrival time. Whichever is bigger, we are selecting that time and adding with this service time. As 3 is bigger than 2, we are adding with 6 and we are getting a 9. And there is a very good reason for that. Because now the arrival time is 0, service time is 3, the completion time is 3. It's all good right now. But what if the next process arrives at 4, fourth second? Then it has to wait for one second. Then the when the time is fourth, fourth second, the process is selected and executed for six seconds. Then the out output should be ten. So I think you got my point. So that is what we are doing. And there is also another case where it is not a mandatory that a process should arrive at a zero time. So it may arrive at any time. So what we are assuming is that we are directly uh, the completion time of the first process is the summation of the arrival time and the service time of the first process. This is what we are doing over here in our program. See, let's see here. We are assigning STT equal to AA, which is the structure array arrival time. Next, we are arrival time of process 0, that is first process is the summation of, no, I mean completion time of the first process is the summation of the arrival time and the service time of the first process. Next, STD, uh, it refers to the present time, that means the current count of the time. Next, we are assigning it to the completion time. So, the present time is 3. So let's look over here, it will be a bit easy for you. Initially STT is equal to the arrival time, that is arrival time of A is 0. Next, arrival uh, completion time of process 0 is the summation of STT and service time. So the summation 0 plus 3, result is 3. Next, STT which refers to the current time is equal to a is of completion time that is stt equal to 3 next for i equal to 1 for i equal to 1 i less than n i plus plus is a further loop because now we have to find for the rest of the processes that is we have already found for the first process so there are remaining n minus 1 process and so what we are doing is temp i which is a temporary integer variable stores the arrival time of the next process. If tempi is greater than stt, that is the case before in which I have said earlier, the completion time is 3, the arrival time is 2, the process B is directly selected. What if the arrival time is 4, then it has to wait for 1 second. Let's I'll better show you with an example, it should be better, better for you understand. In this case I am just taking an example of just three processes, three processes A, B, 3, B, 5, 2, C, 2, 1. Yes, now this would serve as a very good example. Let's see A equal to a arrives at 0, 2 and 5. You see the given order, process A, Z, A0, 3, B. I have given the input as A, B, C, but it is stored as A, C, B because it is stored according to their arrival times. A arrives at 0, C at 2 and B at 5. Let's see what happens. A equal to 0 plus 3 equal to 3. Okay. Next, C arrives at 2, so 3 plus 1 equal to 4. Next, B arrives at 5, means that 
the CPU, uh, the CPU should wait for a second till the next process arrives. At the fifth second, it arrives. So it adds five plus two, and the result is seven. Now what happens over here is, before we have added directly three plus one equal to four, but now we are adding, we are comparing four and five. Since five is bigger, we are adding five and two. The result is seven. This is how it works. Let us see the calculation program. We are initially storing the tempi variable, which is the next process arrival time. Just a moment. It has went away. You see, I mean, I'll do it. Number of processes. C A zero C B five one C two one. As you have seen, you see, I am storing the tempi equal to triple of five arrival time. Tempi is two. Next, I am comparing with STDT that is three completion time, previous completion time. As it is less, we are directly adding three plus one equal to four. You can see here. If it is tempi is greater than STDT, we are assigning STDT equal to tempi. So till here you have no problem. When you come over here in this loop, completion time is four, arrival time is five. So this condition is satisfied. So now STTT is equal to five. We are adding five plus one equal to six, and the rest of all can be done easily with the formulas. Just formula base. Everyone can understand this code. I hope you have understood. Thanks for watching.